I'm going to absolutely simplify color grading and how I do it. And this isn't going to turn you into a professional colorist. I am not a professional colorist by any means. I'm gonna show you how to do this in Final Cut Pro 10. And these tips and tricks do carry over into programs such as DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. But this is literally like scratching the surface of color grading, but are still the things that you need to know right off the hop before you start getting into all of the super technical side of things when it comes to color grading. So if you have no idea what you're doing when you're color grading, then this video is 100% for you. This is a really great start and I'm really going to dumb things down in this video as I do in all of my YouTube tutorials. Again, these are the beginning steps of what you need to know. So make sure you stick around to the end of this video. Now I did pull three clips from three different shoots that I've had in the past and they're all outdoor clips uh, with broad daylight because I feel like that's like what majority of the people are kind of filming in is like broad daylight outdoors. A lot of beginners are just using their natural environment to their advantage because it's free. So we're gonna start with this scene right here. This is a performance scene for a music video. So I shot this in a color profile called Vlog and Vlog is Panasonic or Lumix's log format or log picture profile. So. We're gonna go ahead and basically color correct this and color grade it. So I'm gonna go into the top right here and I'm gonna to go to color wheels. This is kind of what I start with. Now I click command seven and that is a shortcut here and that's gonna actually pop up your waveform. So you can switch all of this up here but um, I always just edit with the waveform here. So I'm gonna click on my clip and now we can see the waveform. So before we get into grading everything, I want to point something out and this is the most important takeaway for waveforms, okay? So these are your highlights right here. If your highlights peak past the 100 mark, so if they sit like in the 100 to 120 mark, your highlights are actually peaking or clipping. So you're gonna see an overexposed image, which means things just look way too bright. And we don't like that look of just too bright. So. I'm gonna show you an example of that. So I'm gonna to go to my highlights here in my color wheels and I'm gonna drag my highlights up. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna drag it past the point of 100 and what are we seeing here? Way, 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 way too overexposed. So we're gonna pull this down and what I like to actually do is let these waveforms sit right below the 100 mark. Now something to also take note of what do these waveforms actually mean? And it's actually very simple, it's not a science. So these waveforms are showing exactly what is in your image, the colors in your image, okay? Or the exposure in your image. So if we look at our image here, scanning it from left to right, right here, we kind of see a little bit of a like reddish spike. Like what could that be? That's actually this can right here you can see a little bit of a red and green spike that's coming from this can. Now all the blues are where we're spiking in blues. So that could be the sky, as you can see right here, is showing right here. Um, on the very right side, the girl's shirt is blue, so we're seeing a lot of blues spiking, and these cups of water we're seeing spiking as well. Now that we have that out of the way, we're gonna go into grading this. So again, I'm going to bump my highlights up to just below 100, bring the shadows down, now the shadows is the opposite of your highlights, right? So this is the darkest part of the image. So when I pull my shadows down, this is what crushing shadows means. So if I bring my shadows down to here, we start to lose detail in the shadows. When your shadows or these wavelengths are going below the zero line, we start to lose detail in our shadows or our darks. So by losing detail, what I mean by this is if I were to crush the shadows on this image right now, I will actually start to lose detail on my shirt and you won't be able to see like any of like the wrinkles or anything like I might like I'll even show you so I'm ruffling up my shirt here and if I crush the shadows you're not even going to notice that my shirt is super wrinkly because it's just showing a black blob on my shirt which again loses detail which we don't want. All right, so I'm gonna bring these shadows down to about here. It's okay if they kind of start to lose a bit of detail here. I think that's coming from right in here, which doesn't really matter underneath the table. Now our midtones is everything in between our highlights and our shadows. So what I like to do is basically use midtones as like adding contrast to the image. So we're gonna pull our midtones down a bit. And as you can see, this is like super, super dark. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the global up a little bit. That pretty much pulls all my shadows, highlights, and midtones up. I'm going to bring up the highlights. So I'm actually 
overexposing this sky a little bit. I'm going to bring my shadows down a bit. Now we can start to see some stuff coming in, some colors coming in. Now I'm going to pump some highlights in there, some saturation. So this is our saturation on the left, pump saturation there, a little bit on the mint tones, which is going to affect his skin. But we don't want to go too much because now he starts to turn red and we start to get way too much oversaturated images here. So we're going to pull it back. And I think like right there is a nice saturated punch. And we're going to actually bring this up slightly here. Nice. All right, so next what I'm going to do is actually add a LUT. You can go this route. You don't have to. I'm not telling everybody they should use a LUT, but it can help give your image just a little bit of a punch. I use Color Finale. I drag Color Finale over top, and I'm going to go into Edit Layers. Now, I can go through all my LUTs and see how things look, so you can test this. You don't have to be like a one-and-done type of deal. I like to use my natural log LUTs just to give it a little bit of a kick and if you want to check out my log LUTs I sell them they're super cheap on my online shop I'll leave a link for that in the description down below so I'm going to click my log LUT 1.0 obviously that's way too much so we're going to go to the opacity and we're just going to add a very slight amount guys I'm adding 15 percent 16 percent okay so as you can see things are still just looking too saturated for my liking now this is the sauce right here, okay? So we're gonna go back into our color wheels, but we're gonna click on hue versus saturation curves. This is where you start to actually grade things. So what I do is I go to the hue versus sat, I click the eyedropper here, and I'm gonna click on blue. And then I'm going to pull my blue back. I can eliminate the blue colors in the image, or I can pump them up. As you can see, we don't wanna do that though. I'm going to slightly bring this down ever so slightly. Now I'm going to hit the greens and let's say I want to go for a little bit of a desaturated green look. So what I can do is pull the greens back. I'm going to click on the artist's skin there and I'm going to pull that back very slightly because he's looking a little red. And you can kind of totally play around with this as well. So um, now I'm going to go here try to pump up his skin tone just ever so slightly. Now next what I like to do is I notice that his skin tone looks a little dark. So here I go into the Hue versus Luma, click on his skin tone, and I'm going to pump it up just very slightly. See how small of a difference that is and I'm barely pulling on this. So I'm gonna leave it right there. I like that, sweet. So this is the first clip. Um, this is very simple. Obviously, I can go way deeper into this and I probably would. But for people that are just getting into color grading log footage, this is the best place to start. Don't mess around with everything too much. Keep it simple and just punch it with saturation and mess around with your hue versus saturation curves. So we're going to go through two more clips now just so you guys really get the point. Um, this is a modeling video and I'm going to show you a good example of actually crushing blacks and or crushing shadows in your image. So here we're again going to go into our color board. Now this clip was shot on a Canon R7 with a C-Log3 color profile. So we're going to go into our color wheels. We're going to pull up those highlights a bit. Um, now again, guys, we are seeing um, some highlight clipping here. That is coming from the sky right here. Now it was an overcast day. I'm actually okay with over exposing that background so I can bring more detail and light to the model here, the subject. Now our shadows, this is where the drastic changes comes. So we're going to pull the shadows down, boom. Now we're gonna pull the mid-tones down just to give it a little bit of a contrasty look, but we're not crushing the shadows at all. We're sitting right on that zero line. We still have lots of detail in the shadows. Now I'm gonna add some saturation in here, okay? So I'm gonna add some Highlight saturation, so as you can see, your skin tone now starts to pop. I like that. Um, now the shadows, it's going to be the darker parts of the image we're going to see start to pop now too. I like that. Mid-tones, we just want to slightly bump, not too much because otherwise she's going to look like a carrot. So um, we're just going to bump this up ever so slightly. That's good right there. Okay, cool. So this is looking pretty solid here. So next what I'm gonna do is um, drag a LUT on here. Let's see what we got. I'm just gonna place a LUT on here at like maybe 10%, just keep it nice and clean. Let's go with my cinematic LUT 3. Which again, you can find this in the description of the video. 
So as you can see, this is going to be adding a little bit too much shadow in there. So we're going to leave that there and we're actually going to bump the shadows up. And we're going to bring those midtones back down. So that gave us just a bit of like a desaturated look, which is pretty sweet. Uh, I'm going to bring those shadows back up a bit. Yeah, nice. I really dig that. Now we're going to go in again into our hue versus saturation. I'm going to click on her skin and we're going to bump that ever so slightly. I'm going to try to bring those oranges down in the background. It's kind of hard to isolate that. Um, let's click on the greens. Let's desat that a little bit because I feel like it's kind of taking away from our spotlight, which is the model. Um, let's desat those blues in the back. Again, just putting more spotlight on the model here. And that is looking pretty solid, honestly, guys. Um, again, I could go more deeper into this and I probably will when I go to edit this video with these um, clips. But um, for now, this is looking pretty solid, like very, very solid. All right, so here is a quick example of crushing shadows and what not to do with your shadow color wheel. So here we're just gonna bump our exposure up there, highlights, and now we're gonna bring the shadows down. Now watch what happens, guys, watch what happens. Right now we're sitting right at the zero line. If I, and you can see the details, you can see the details in the pants, the pant um, pocket here, like the outline. Now what happens when we continue to crush shadows? Now we crush the shadow and you can't even tell if there's, again, wrinkles in the back of the shirt or like detail in the shirt, you can't see any detail in the pants, even on her jacket here. When we pull this back, now we start to see that detail and all we have to do now is just add a little bit of contrast with the midtones, and we, we keep that detail in all of the blacks. Now, obviously, we're going to have to bump up saturation and stuff. This is very, very um, random when I'm doing this, but... Um, as you can see, we still keep the detail in there and our wavelengths are showing us just that, that we are keeping detail in the shadows as well as in the highlights. Obviously, we're blown out on the sky, but that's fine because there's an overcast day and I feel like clipping highlights on the sky almost like makes it look like a little more dreamy. So for this, we can get away with it. And last but not least, we have one last clip we're gonna go over here. This is a clip that I shot just the other weekend of um, a football game. And again, I did shoot this with a Canon R7 in C-Log3 color profile. Going into our color wheels, first thing I do every single damn time. So as you can see, we're kind of, you know, we're shooting with log right now, okay? So we have a lot of room to manipulate the colors and the image. So we're going to pull up our highlights, bring down our shadows. Already we're getting a lot more detail here. We're going to pull these midtones down. Look what's happening. Giving it a contrasty look. Now we're going to bump our highlights up a little bit. Give it some saturation. Bump our shadows up a bit. Midtones. This is where we have to be a little careful. We don't want to oversaturate it, guys. Remember, this is a beginner mistake where everybody just pumps the saturation, especially on the midtones, and you have an image that looks like this, which in my opinion looks so, so, so amateur. It looks like really bad because look at how much more detail and just a more cinematic feel you get when you just give it just a little bit of a bump. That's all we're going for. For this one, we're not even gonna add a lot. We're just gonna go straight into our hue versus saturation. We're gonna cre create our own stylized look. So I'm gonna click on hue versus sat, the eyedropper. Let's click on the blue and let's, um, Bring this down just a bit because it's very, very, very um, bright. Now we're going to go to the orange and we're going to bring this down ever so slightly as well. Now the greens, I want to go for a des desaturated look on this. So we're going to pull the greens slightly down and that's desaturating the greens. Now we're going to go into the yellows here and we're going to pump the yellows on the trees or we can even desat it even more. It would be actually kind of cool if we just did a desaturated look and then bump the blues up, bump the reds up. Let's see how this looks, it's gonna look sick actually. Yeah, that's cool. Let's actually bring back these oranges slightly. Now we have a really cool look, like this is pretty damn solid. And for something like football where you don't wanna do like a teal and orange look or like these weird stylized like creative looks, this is a really, really like nicely color corrected and graded um, 
piece of footage. And I won't lie, I actually um, pretty much did this exact grade for the client's video and sent it off to them today and they absolutely love the video. So um, yeah, there's no requests on changing things with the color grade. I think that obviously the desaturated look looks, it fits the vibe of this video considering it's, you know, people playing football and football is a very, you know, crazy, crazy sport. So it's like the color grade really does set the mood for the visual. So with me going with the desaturated look, a more bland look, but making the, the jerseys and the colors on the football players pop, it almost puts more emphasis on the players and what the players are doing throughout the film. All right, guys, so that's basically it for Color Grading 101. Um, this is, again, a very entry-level video, but it is something that you need to know before really getting into color grading. Like, you need to know these basic-ass things before you jump into color grading full swing because if you jump into color grading, you start watching, like, all these colorists on YouTube, you just don't even understand the basic fundamentals, like, the basic, basic, basic fundamentals. And again, I am no colorist. Colorists can rip me all day long. This is how I color grade my footage. It's very simple. I keep it simple. And this is why I turn around my projects so quickly. And I'm not saying that I'm sacrificing quality for the quantity of projects I'm putting out, but this is just the way I do it. And a lot of people do compliment me on my color grading and they ask me to make color grading tutorials. So here it is, nothing special. Anybody can do it. If I can color grade a video, so can you. It really is this easy. So with all that being said, guys, thank you everybody for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I post a lot of filmmaking tutorials and give away so much free game on the channel. And we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.